Everybody, welcome to the show. You know where you are, the nine at nine with me, Tigo. And it's the third Friday of the month. And you know what that means? It's Clutter Friday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And today we're gonna get to the heart of the matter because Mel's here and she don't play. Coach Mel is in the house. So sit right there. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Yeah, you heard me right. We're going to get to the heart of the matter. I am too. You know, it's the third Friday of the month. That means Coach Mel's in the house. We got to talk about clutter. And I know she's going to call me out on it because it's been a month. And, and I was supposed to do a few things. Um, Maybe somebody else should come in. Maybe Alan should host this one. No, no, no. I'm going to face my medicine. Hey, Coach Mel, are you out there? What's up, t -Gun? So good to be back with you, my love. So good to see you. There's no judgment. There's no shame. There's no fault. There's no blame. So just meet yourself right where you are, my love. You know, I have looked in the mirror. You know, I got Coach Kelly now, too. So I have yes. looked in the mirror, you yes. know, and 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 I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got a little clutter to clean out. Got a little clutter. But this month we're going to talk about, you know, getting to the heart of the matter. What do you mean? Yeah. So last time we were talking about the truth about clutter and we yeah. left it with your presence is required. The fact mm -hmm. that you've been avoiding yourself your entire life is why all the clutter accumulates, whether it's the physical clutter, carrying excess weight in the body, being in the toxic relationships, not having enough time, being too busy, having mounting debt, all of those external manifestations that all happens because of an avoidance. And if you're avoiding what's going on outside, because the outside is only a mirror of the inside, that just simply means you're avoiding you. You're not willing yeah. to be present for your own experience. Now here, check this out. We're right. so afraid to be quiet by ourselves and just be present for our own experience that there was an experiment done where all the experience, all the participants were asked, would you be willing to be paid to receive an electric shock? They all said uh, no. Excuse me? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. All, they all said no. And then each okay. one, one by one, they're led into the room alone to sit at a table with a chair, no window, nothing to do but sit with yourself. You could meditate, okay. you could twiddle your thumbs, you could do push-ups, or you could give yourself an electric shock. All right. Over 50% of men chose to shock themselves over and over again. And over 20% of women chose to do the same rather than just sit still and be quiet with themselves. I think we need to do that experiment. I want to see. <laughs> oh right? my gosh, are you serious? I am dead serious. So the, the, the willingness to just stop and be present with one's own experience is so terrifying that we would rather shock ourselves than to do it. That's amazing. But I got to ask you, I got to ask you, you know, yeah, it's you, right? And you got to be able to do exactly what you're saying. But what about the people that are more afraid of looking at themselves than dealing with the reality that they have right now today? What about those people? How do they get past the fear of really looking of at themselves? Yeah, That's it is. all of us. So, yeah. you know, it really is, if this is not for the faint of heart, I tell this to all my clients, like it's not for the faint of heart. If it was easy to do, you would have been doing it years ago, but it just requires your willingness. And so some people are like, I can't do it even for five minutes. So mm. what I teach my clients is to literally do it for 30 seconds or 60 seconds or two minutes to start, whatever it is. And what I'm talking about is what I teach my clients called, called allowing the now. So not meditation, not quieting your mind down, not focusing on your breathing. You're literally just stopping from looking what's going on outside and just paying attention to 
bodily sensations, thoughts you're thinking, smells you hear, emotions you feel, sounds you sound you hear. So smells you smell, sounds you hear. You're literally just paying attention to what's happening in the moment and okay. allowing it, not changing it, not fixing it, not needing to do anything about it because we can only be in one of two states. Everything right. we do comes down to one of two states. We're either resisting and clinging so resisting what's uncomfortable or clinging to what we desperately don't want to let go of, which is a state of contraction. It all comes down to contraction. Or we can be in a state of allowing. That's it. Those are the two states that we're ever in. And so we're so used to being in a contracted state, avoiding ourselves, not willing to look, no, don't want to see you. No, don't want to see you. That all I do is teach you how to do the opposite. And in learning how to do the opposite, you make space for magic to happen in your life. But that's, I mean, right there, if they can do that and, and be able to open up to that, and I know you can get anybody to do it, but it's like, if they can, then isn't that the answer to why they're stuck at work, why they're stuck in the relationship, why they're stuck in their business? They, they've been making a million dollars for the last 10 years every year, but they never get past that million. Isn't that why? Is that they can't do exactly what you just said? Yeah, 100%. When I first learned about this, you couldn't walk in my room. My entire floor was covered and I had no will to live. At 15 years old, I wanted to die. I didn't give a rat's butt about getting organized. I was looking at how to get off the planet. So I had no will wow. to live. And I was introduced to this practice that I teach my clients. And the first thing that happened was I decided I actually wanted to live. I got this will to live and a zest for life. And then spontaneously without me hiring an organizer or being like, oh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to spend 15 minutes working on my clutter and cleaning my room. It didn't happen like that. I just spontaneously started creating order in my life. And I went from that cluttered mess to someone who could no longer tolerate disorder within a year's time. And then every other area of my life got better. I got off the drugs. I got out of the 12-year toxic marriage. I shed the weight. I got out of all the debt. I've opened the flow of financial abundance. Like, And my life just keeps getting better and better. And all I ever do is this one practice allowing the now. So then the question becomes, you know, is it... Somebody is going, yeah, that's nice. You're young. You got your whole life ahead of you. You know, I'm 58. Maybe somebody that's my age, maybe in their 60s or something. Most 70, of my clients are 60 say, plus, just so you know. See? And they're saying it's too late for them. So it's no, not too late. They're for them. getting okay. results. Most of my clients are in their 60s, 70s, sometimes 80s. Wow. Yeah. So what would you tell someone? Let's say that it's someone that has been your client, right? And they have children, or in my case, grandchildren. You know, what should we be teaching them, you know, now so they don't have to wait till they're 60 something, you know, because by then there'll be an AI male and they could just go and, you know, <laughs> you know they don't have to wait until they're 60 to meet the AI male, you know, to talk about it. What should we be teaching the next generation? I actually have my clients teach their kids allowing the now. I have families that do it together. I have couples that do it together and they bring it to the next generation by leading by example and doing this simple practice, teaching kids how to be present with themselves instead of running from themselves now so that they're not on the run their entire lives. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay. We already saw the two minute warning. So we got to, we got to wrap it up, but you know, what about someone who is now shifting, you know, and I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as I can, but because of COVID we're quote unquote coming out of it right now. And people have found new paths. You know, this is the gig economy. Now, what about the ones that are dying to start their own business or they're dying to just get out of the job they've done for 25 years? Will this help them? 100%. I was stuck in a job that I was actually miserable at. And by doing this practice, I went from being in a job that I was miserable at to launching my own business eight years ago, all as a direct result of doing this. The only thing that's in the way of you starting your own business is yourself, your limiting wow. beliefs, that inner clutter. And until you can get present with it and remove the interference, you'll never be able to start your own business and be successful. I think Alan's using the different clock, but I could swear we've got another five minutes. I mean, it's just, there's that one minute warning. Okay. So before he cuts us off, coach, go ahead and tell everybody how they can find them, find you, how they can get your book. Let's go. 
Yeah, the best way, just Google Mel Mason, the clutter expert, Facebook, YouTube, and you can download my book, Freedom from Clutter at freegiftfrommel.com. Oh my goodness, thanks. I can't wait to see what we're gonna talk about next month. I promise to do my homework. Um, and you're just amazing. I hope you'll come back again and again. I can't wait to see what we do next month. Oh my gosh, absolutely. I'd be happy to. I love. I can talk about this all day long. Awesome, awesome. All right, everybody. If you didn't catch that or you're driving, don't call me. You know what to do. Go to tigodirect.com, type in mail, type in clutter. You know, just type. No, I'm kidding. But definitely type in clutter, type in mail. She'll come up, connect with her. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost her anything. It's just a way for you guys to connect. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you'll come back next time. And as always, I'm Tigo. I'll talk to you next time.